That had just published a paper called Large Concept Model, and this could give language models human-like thinking capabilities. So right now, language models you know, like ChatGPT, Claude, or other AI assistants, they basically work on a word-by-word -word basis, or sometimes even smaller chunks of words. They're basically like super-powered, autocomplete systems. I mean, they can predict the next word in a sentence and stuff, but they don't really get the bigger picture, you know? Like the underlying concepts. They don't really understand. It's kind of like they're reading a book, but just by looking at each letter one by one, instead of understanding the sentences in the whole story. But what if A, I could think in concepts instead of just words? I mean, wouldn't that be crazy? Well, that's where large concept models, or LCM, come in. So in this video, we're going to break it all down piece by piece. We'll look at what LCM actually are, how they, you know, do their thing, and why they're such a huge deal. Okay, so to really appreciate what LCMs are doing, we kind of need to understand the um, limitations of how AI handles language right now. We all interact with large language models all the time. Do you know like ChatGPT or Gemini or any of those other ones? Yeah, they're powerful tools, but honestly, they've got some pretty fundamental problems. So yeah, these models are trained on like a ridiculous amount of text data. I mean, we're talking about more text than any human could read in a thousand lifetimes and they learn to predict the next word in a sequence based on the patterns they've seen in all that data. Which is super impressive, don't get me wrong. But um, it definitely has its drawbacks. First off, they're super sensitive to the data they're trained on. So, like, if that data has any biases in it, and let's be real, it probably does, then the model, it's gonna kind of reflect those biases too. It's not really its fault, but it's a problem. And they can be, you know, kind of easily fooled too. Like if you phrase something in a weird way or use these things called um, adversarial examples, basically tricky inputs designed to confuse them, they might totally get it wrong. Plus, they can hallucinate information, which is like a fancy way of saying they just make stuff up. It sounds, you know, plausible, but it's uh, completely wrong. It's kind of creepy, actually, when you think about it. And they really struggle with real world knowledge or basic common sense. I mean, it's kind of like they've read every book in the library, which is cool, but they haven't, like, actually gone outside and, you know, experienced the world, right? They don't really get it. Oh, and, uh, almost everything is in English. The whole AI world right now is super biased towards English. So, like, other languages are kind of left behind. It's a whole other issue, really. Think of it this way. Imagine you're trying to understand a movie, right? But you can only see individual frames, like still images. You don't get to see the whole moving picture. You wouldn't understand the plot or the characters or, you know, the themes. You might get a general sense of what's going on, maybe, but you'd miss pretty much all the important stuff, right? The nuances, the deeper meaning. Well, that's kind of what it's like for these current AI language models. They're just looking at individual words without really understanding the bigger picture. Okay, so now we get to the cool stuff, right? Large concept models. So the uh, basic idea behind LCM, it's to shift the focus of AI from just individual words to these things called concepts. And a concept, it's basically like a building block of an idea. You know, it's um, an abstract representation of meaning that goes way beyond just specific words or even uh, different languages. So instead of processing text word by word, you know, like we were talking about before, an LCM would first try to understand the underlying concepts that are being expressed. And then it would work with those concepts to reason or generate text or uh, do other language-y things. It's kind of like, you know, you read a book, right? And you understand the main ideas of each sentence. Those are the concepts. And then you can talk about the book's themes and the characters and, you know, the plot. You can even uh, compare it to other books, right? Because you understand it on a deeper level. So in the paper we're looking at today, this is some like cutting edge research, by the way. The researchers, they decided to use sentences as a stand in for these concepts, you know, cause like a sentence often expresses one single coherent idea. And they use this existing tool called sonar to create these things called sentence embeddings. Now embeddings are basically like numerical representations of the meaning of a sentence. It's like a fingerprint for the sentence's meaning. And the cool thing about sonar is that it can handle text in 200 languages. And it can even work with speech in 76 languages. Pretty wild, right? So the LCM, it takes these sentence embeddings 
and it uh, learns to predict the next sentence in a sequence. But it's doing in this abstract concept space, you know? It's not just like predicting words. And then there's this other part of the system called the concept decoder, and it takes that predicted concept, the numerical representation of the next sentence's meaning, and it turns it back into actual text. And it can do it in any language that Sonar supports. So it could predict a concept, and then generate that concept as a sentence in English or Spanish or Parja Japanese or whatever. All right, let's get a little bit more technical here, but you know, don't worry, I'll try to keep it easy to follow. So how do these uh, LCMs actually learn to predict these concepts? So the researchers, they tried out a bunch of different approaches to train these models. But the ones that you know, seemed to work the best were based on this idea called diffusion. Now, diffusion, it's uh, kind of like, um, imagine you're gradually adding noise to something. Like, uh, imagine taking a picture and making it more and more blurry until, you know, you can't even tell what it is anymore. And then you learn to reverse that process. You know, you uh, learn to reconstruct the original clear picture from the blurry, noisy one. That's kind of what diffusion is about. So in the case of these LCM, they're adding noise to the sentence embeddings. You know, those uh, numerical representations of meaning. And then they're training the model to predict the original clean embedding, the one without the noise. And this process helps the model learn the relationships between different concepts, you know, like how they connect to each other and how they can be combined to form coherent sequences of ideas. It's kind of like learning how different ingredients can be put together to make a delicious dish. Each ingredient is like a concept, and the dish is the coherent text that the model generates. Now, another thing they did in this research, they experimented with um, something called quantizing the concept space. Now imagine converting a super high resolution image, you know, with like millions of colors into a pixelated one. You're reducing the amount of information, but in a controlled way. So they wanted to see if they could get good results by representing concepts with less precision, kind of like rounding off the numbers. And it turns out it, uh, it works pretty well. They use something called RVQ for this, which stands for residual vector quantization. Pretty complicated name, but the idea is simple. They also tried other loss weighting strategies. Think of it like telling the model which parts of the text are more important to get right. Like saying, hey, pay extra attention to this sentence, it's crucial. This helps the model focus on what matters most. They use something called fragility. It is like how much a sentence changes if you make minor changes to the words. Okay, so like, why should you even care about all this, right? I mean, it sounds kind of complicated and maybe a little bit abstract, right? Well, LCM, they have the potential to totally revolutionize the way AI interacts with language. They could solve a lot of the problems we talked about earlier, you know, with the current language models. I mean, this is like a huge leap forward for AI, right? We're, uh, we're talking about AI that can uh, truly understand language, not just like mimic it, you know? So what can this new AI actually do? Well, imagine way better translations, even for like those smaller languages that don't have tons of data. That's one thing. And for summarizing stuff, LCM could actually get the main idea of a document, not just like mash up random sentences. Chatbots, they could finally be smart enough to have like real conversations. We might even get I that can help us write stories, poems, even uh, music. And for science, this could be huge. Imagine AI helping us analyze like crazy complex data to make, you know, actual discoveries. It's pretty wild to think about. Now, of course, uh, LCMs, they're like still a pretty new technology, right? So there are uh, some limitations and uh, there's still a lot of uh, research to be done. So there are still some hurdles, right? Like what even is the best way to define a concept? You know, they use sentences in this research, but is that ideal? Plus, these models are computationally heavy. And even with tons of data, some concepts are just like rare making it tough for the AI to learn them all properly. But researchers, they're, they're already thinking about ways to improve LCM and address these challenges. So yeah, large concept models, they're, uh, they're a pretty big deal. I mean, they represent a fundamental shift in how we think about AI and language understanding. We're moving from the tiniest models that just predict words to models that can actually reason with concepts. They can think in ideas. So what do you guys think about uh, LCM? Excited about this as I am? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more mind-blowing AI content. Bye.